we need to get right to it and then welcome in a good friend of the show, the Milwaukee Torrents' very own Andy Davi. Andy, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you for having me again. You're very welcome. Now, it's been a couple months since we've had you on the show, Andy, and a lot has happened. Uh, last time we talked, the Milwaukee Torrent was more than an idea, but it was not nearly to the point that it is now. So can you kind of catch us up to speed of what's all been going on? Well, I think the last time we had uh, you had me in, we were at the Highbury. Mm. That's right, yeah. And yep. uh, we were still talking about the ESL2. That's right. So we obviously made the switch to the NPSL. <clears throat> what was a, a longer process, but at the end, um, for the for the torrent, for the town, for the soccer community, obviously a better league, mm. well-known league with more than eighty teams, um, just in the Midwest, three divisions. Um, we can play as a professional team that we are in the Midwest. We're going to play a, a, a provisional season so far because some of the teams came in later. Some teams in the Midwest in the Central Division left, and um, but it's all good. Um, there will be a reshuffle next year in in the divisions, and we're going to have uh, seven teams in the in the Central Division. And yeah, we're happy that we're finally in the NPSL, and uh, go and develop everything from there. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting too, as you mentioned, you've got. Uh uh, provisional season you're playing here, uh, looking at your schedule. You guys kick things off April 23rd against uh, Marquette University, and then you take on uh, Uni University of Wisconsin-Green Bay as well, April 30th. So two fairly well-known names in the soccer community in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, why did you guys choose to go with uh, two college teams for your first games? Well, I think it was for me it was important that um, we see the step between college soccer and then to pro soccer. Mm. Um and um, obviously with the, with the connection that I have through the years, through the colleges, um, I just asked them. And we also wanted to do different games in the communities. We didn't sure. want to play all the games at E-Line. We wanted to go down to Milwaukee. We're still trying to have a game at MSOE. Um, we're going to have games at German, uh, in Germantown. And, um, yeah, I'm happy that we play those against those college teams. Um, the the schedule for many majors teams is already full, so uh, we made the decision that we play those college teams mm. instead of, of just major teams. And that's fantastic. Now, the last time that we talked, uh, you only had uh, two players that we knew of. You knew of we had, knew of James Weber and we knew of Ian Bennett, and now it seems like every other day you guys are announcing a new player. Um, I don't expect you, you to shoot everybody's name off on the top of the year, but can you highlight at least maybe some names that the Milwaukee area might, might know a little bit more? Well, we have Stuart Grable. Tony and uh, AJ Patterson on the team. Uh, Matt Isol oh, is yeah. on the team. Uh, Dustin Ashley, UWM standout defender. Mm -hmm. um, Luke Goodnet is on the team. Bojan Jovicic is on the team. Um, we have a we have a roster of 19 players now, and we're going to work with those 19 players. You are okay. Yes. Okay. And what is the what is your ideal end game goal that you're looking for, though, if you had to pick for the amount of players you'd like on a roster? Because I think it's supposed to be 23, I think, is eventually what it is. Well, I, I could register 26. Oh, you could. Okay. Um, but, um, you know, there's always things can happen. Um, I do, as of right now, I do not plan to put any other players on the roster. Okay. Because I want to work with those 19 players sure. that I have. Mm -hmm. They know the schedule. They're committed. They will be there. I hope we don't have any, any injuries, but there's always, always players in my head uh, – if I have to add somebody that I can add. And you mean you can always call Simon. I can call well. Simon. <laughs> yeah. Simon off the bench. He's, he's very good. You know. Always good for short, 10, 15 minutes. Exactly. Right? Short right. little right. bursts yes. if you yes. need him. That's all we need at the end. I'll so. do my one sprint and then I'll be asking, all right, yeah, take Coach, it I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. So, um, as long as you score. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Right. He's the wonder sub. You know, he's the Alan Gordon of the Milwaukee <laughs> Torrent. Well, that's fantastic. Well, it, it looks like as just looking through your roster, looking through everything, not only just as your team as a whole is coming together um, on the field, but off the field, uh, it seems that promotions, it seems that sponsors, it seems like you're really starting to put everything together and look like, I, I mean, I don't not that you weren't a real soccer team, but you're looking like a real established organization now. And I think that speaks volumes not only of the work that you put into everything, but it seems like the community has been fairly excited about it as well and you've already you were telling us a little off the air as well that you've already started selling season ticket packages yes. as well and you have some good news kind of about that don't you yeah we have um so first i mean I remember when you guys had me in first there was a reason why i announced this one year before we could actually play because i knew yes. yep. it's a long way i mean the sponsors that we have um it's a group of 12 companies bigger companies mm -hmm. um that are that are supporting the torrent. They all have uh, signed up for two years, wow, so okay. that we do not have to worry about every year finding new new sponsors. Now I'm actually at this point where 
companies come to us. Mm. And this is something that... And that's, that's what you want. That's what you want. That's a good problem to have. Um, we just started, um, not even, I think I started Friday with season packages to sell. Okay. Um, we have a limited number of 50. We have only four left, but then also the normal season tickets go out. We're almost already at 100. Um, we have time to sell those season tickets. The deadline is May 15th. Okay. Um, and... Um, we wanted. We just wanted to also have the opportunity to play some games before the deadline runs out. That people really get excited about it. That they see, okay, this is really going to happen. Because I think that was for the for most of the people at the beginning when I announced this. Mm. That they said, yeah, okay, is this really going to happen? He announced this already a year before. What's going to happen? And then you signed the first player. Oh, that's interesting. You announce a league. <laughs> Doesn't matter which league it is. Then you announce a sponsor. Uh, the, uh, the f different sponsors and now that the schedule is out now I think it really is going to pick up I think we just got in the last two months almost almost like six seven hundred new likes on Facebook wow okay nice. um, that's fantastic and yeah it's just I I told I I said this to you before I, I knew it would work but it has you need the time to mm -hmm, do this exactly and, um, the support is there we obviously wish there would be much more support from the public but we had yesterday for the first time a meeting with the uh, uh, Milwaukee Barons. It oh, mm. was a great meeting. Um, they they support as good as we can. And, yeah, everything so far is, is all set. We could actually play, starting playing already next week. And, of, wow. course, of course, you have your own founding uh, supporters group, The Flood, as the well. Flood, yeah. You know, and that's not unusual. We see, like, in Columbus, there's four or five different supporters groups, but they all get together during the game, sit in the same section in the uh, Nordic. Uh, I imagine we'll end up seeing that at Torrent Games. Um, and and I'd like to I'd like to really clarify that this is professional outdoor soccer. All the players you have on the roster are getting paid. Um, you'll have some big news yeah. coming very so soon about very this soon, professional yeah. tag. Yeah. So uh, we're going to have tonight. Um, our players will going to uh, sign tonight the contracts with USSF. Okay. That means they will be registered with the USSF as a professional soccer player, so that nobody can say. This is not professional soccer. It is. They're paid. They have unemployment insurance. Everything what you need for mm. it. And, um, yeah, that was important to me because I do not want that anybody says uh, um, I'm not better like some amateur teams who pay the players under the mm -hmm. table because uh, we are. We are a professional organization. Uh, we do everything the right way, the legal way. And, uh, yeah, in support with U.S. soccer and the NPSL. Which is fantastic, and that, that kind of moves on to it as well, because last time we talked, you had said you were going to be a part of the American Soccer League, too, and now, just as of a couple of weeks ago, you are now part of the NPSL, which is fantastic, and I was wondering if you could elaborate just a little bit about what it, the NPSL, for those that maybe don't know about it. Well, so the N NPSL stands for the National Premier Soccer League. Um, I think the league started in 2005. Uh, it's a nationwide league with four big regions, mm -hmm. um, each region has at least um, two divisions. We have in the Midwest uh, three divisions. There's now the Central Division and there's the Great Lakes West, where are teams from uh, Michigan in and one team from Ohio. And then there's the Great Lakes, e uh, Great Lakes East that goes all the way to Buffalo. Mm. Mm. Um, the, the league, the league is, is basically they started as an under-23 league. Um, so when uh, when I was running this league with with another Milwaukee club, we used this as a um, typical with with college kids in the summer that they have to do something in the summer. Mm. But um, the league obviously um, they they also look to get bigger. I think they're right now eighty six teams in the whole country. What is the biggest league in America? Yep. Um, and from an advertising from a marketing point, it's it's just um, it's just goals that we're in, in, in this league and um, there are always plans for expansions how do you make this league bigger what is the goal of, of this league I know there's obviously talks about being involved with the NASL mm -hmm. um, does the NPSL can the NPSL go year round those are all the things that we are looking for mm -hmm. and that makes it for us easier to be involved with this absolutely and that's the thing too about soccer year round and that's always the big thing it's like well how can we play soccer year round and it's hard because in the Midwest and the East Coast it's, it's hard I mean unless you have yeah. a, a nice in or stadium or whatever it's hard to play the year round or if you have the travel budget to say hey we're going to go to Florida for the weekend or we're going to yeah. go to California or Texas but it's the fact though is if you build up enough support you build up enough backing people are going to be more than willing to do what they have to to make you know potentially a year round league happen especially with so many teams which is fantastic I mean looking at the map as I am right now and seeing where all the teams are it's you know basically from you know Minnesota east is just 
filled with teams, and obviously there's that great gap in the middle of the country middle, because yeah. nothing exists in the middle of the country in Montana and all that stuff. But and then California comes in with obviously their whole host of teams. So it's just it's great to see though that soccer continues to grow. And I know folks are saying, well, we should focus on building major league soccer. We should focus on building you know the NASL, the USL. But really though. In communities like Milwaukee, and communities all across the nation, having something like what the NPSL does, that really is a good test, though, to find out if a bigger market and a bigger team can exist. And I think you're starting to kind of find that out a little bit, too, right? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, the, the, the main goal cannot be to stay in the NPSL. Of course, mm-hmm. you want to de- develop something higher, but um, you have to make a f- step by step, uh, mm-hmm. baby steps, like I said at the beginning. And uh, we need to establish the torrent mm-hmm. we need to have a fan base and um, and then we we go from there obviously there's a big amount of money that you need um, like I said I run this as of right now as a homegrown program mm-hmm. with players from Wisconsin we have great players in Wisconsin I want that our kids have something to look up and then we go from there and the first is um, just to establish have a great first season and with 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 a great season with great soccer the, the success and the support will come mm. changing Topics just a little bit, still staying on the torrent, of course. You do have your community foundation, yes, and talking about kids and yeah. and wanting kids to be at the games, but also reaching out to them. I'm wondering if you could let the community that doesn't know much about your com- community foundation, you know, shed some light on what that's all about. So what what we're going to do is um, the community condi- uh, foundation will run year out soccer camps um, for kids who cannot afford the hmm. game of soccer. Okay, um, so we are. Um, Currently in in the process of of raising money for those camps, um, I am in touch with uh, recreation, recreational programs. I uh, have already an agreement with one school um, where we do uh, camps for the kids. And I, my personal goal is that we invite to specific camps, we invite coaches from uh, different clubs, and that they would give out scholarships. So the goal is that, like I said, year-round soccer. Kids who cannot afford the sport of soccer or cannot afford mm. to be in, in a club because we all know it, unfortunately, is, it is expensive it to is. be a part yeah. of a club. And um, just giving them the education, give them, inspire them to, uh, um, to become a soccer player and um, just have fun with those kids and give them something some new kind of education and something to look forward to. And maybe, maybe like I said, inspire them to be or to become a soccer player. Mm. Great. And that's uh, you can find information on that on the Milwaukee Torrents uh, webpage, milwaukeetorrent.com. Click on Foundation. People can donate on that page as well to you help can, with the foundation. Yes, can do it on the, on, the, on the page. But our first goal is now for the, for the camp that I have every year with Bayer Leverkusen, we're going to give out 75 scholarships wow. to this okay. camp. Yeah. So um, it w- will, be, will be just great. And, um, yeah, I hope I'm going to get support also for this from the, from the community because it, it's a good thing. Mm. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I mean, it's obvious that you are definitely miles ahead of where you were the last time we talked. I know it's only been, it's it's almost been a year. It's been, it's been a little under a year since we've last had you on for a while. And it's just fantastic to see the growth. And it's obvious that this is something that the people in the Milwaukee area want. And, you know, they'd almost kind of be foolish not to be a part of it because... Look, it's going to happen regardless if they yeah. want it to or not. Exactly. And why would if people love soccer as much as they claim to in the great state of Wisconsin? I mean, even for me being from Florida, coming back to Wisconsin, it's obvious that people love soccer in Wisconsin. So this is something that, from an outsider looking in, you know, it's growing. You know, why would you not want to be a part of it? You know, I'm, I'm excited to come out in some of these games. I know Simon's excited to get out to Absolutely. him as well. And we're just, I think this whole se- this whole upcoming season. I and I understand it's a you know provisional season. It's you know the working out the bugs and the kinks, and I understand that, but. From everything that I've seen from what you're doing with the organization, it looks like people are going to be there going, wait, this is the first season? Like, it's it's going to feel like you guys have been around, I'm sure, for much more than just, you know, a year or two. And I think that speaks to your level of dedication to this club, which is which is obvious and fantastic and very commendable, obviously. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. it's, um, like I said, uh, one year ago, I, it takes time to do it the right way, and people who know me know that I am the German way. It has to be <laughs> organized. It has yes. to be... Um, perfectionist and um, yeah people want they deserve the quality um, and that's what I'm looking for because mm-hmm. without without 100% dedication you won't reach what you mm-hmm. want to reach absolutely well another great thing about this is looking at your roster you've got a lot of hometown kids on this on this club I know they're men but you know yeah I'm yes. almost 40, so I get to say kids now. <laughs> they could be your kids, Simon. <laughs> that's right. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but, that, it, you know, there's there's a lot of 
players on this team that are that are from the area. And quite frankly, you'll have people who say, oh, "I just I, I wish the Torrent was in you know was in the USL or NESL." Got to be realistic. First of all, those cost a heck of a lot more money. Exactly. You, you, both of those, it's going to be announced soon from U.S. Soccer that you need to have an actual. I don't want to say actual stadium because you'd be playing in a stadium over at Elon Park. Correct. Um, but the but capacity the, of the stadium will go up. Right, the minimal right. standards will they will raise the minimal standards. And the fact of the matter is, if if people want a team, if they want to see the torrent get into a higher league, the support needs to be there because that's one of the first thing the first things exactly. these leagues look at is well, what's the support of the local professional team that's yes. there, no mm -hmm. matter the level. Yeah. So. People, get out there, support the torrent. Yeah. And that's, the what I, that's what I said in one of our first interviews, and I said this to everybody. If you, if you identify with, with the Milwaukee torrent and you want to go to a soccer game, you want to drink your beer, you want to eat your bread, you want to stand, stand and chant for the team, it doesn't matter which league it is at the beginning. Mm -hmm. it's, exactly. I mean, you're not a fan of a, of a club because of the league. Right. Mm. Yes. Yes, that's true. That's one hundred percent true. You're a fan of a club because it's your hometown. Uh, it's what you support, what you want. Yep. So you're not a fan of the NASL or the USL. You're a fan of the club, and yeah, if you can, if you have this identification with the Milwaukee Torrent, um, with the guy who is loyal to the town, with the guy who counts on uh, on the local players who wants to do something for the kids, mm. come out, support us. Exactly, yeah, and I think that's a great part about it, too, is down in the city that I'm from in Florida, we have um, a team called the uh, Southwest Florida Adrenaline, um, which is just a PDL team, and is one of those teams that um, you get a chance to see what it's like to have a, an opportunity to have you know young teams, and you said it's not always about the team that you support, and it's not about the league that you support, it's about the team that you support, and this is a very small you know team, they play at a local high school, but fans still come out, they still support it because they support the team, and they support the growth of these young yeah. college guys, and it's a, a few levels, obviously the PDL is different than what the NPSL is, but it was still exciting though when, you know, oh, we're having a soccer team come to, you know, to my, my small town down in Florida, so it's... Like you said, if people support the team, it doesn't matter Correct. if they play, you know, in the in Europe or if they play, you know, in you know the PDL kind of a thing, which is Correct. fantastic. Yeah. Well, right. and, and just one more thing along with that, the great thing about starting in a league like the NPSL, Andy doesn't have to charge an arm and a leg for tickets. Exactly. You know, no. Me and my family of four can go to a game and walk away, having had some hot dogs and whatever else, and not yeah. feel like that we now got to take out a home equity loan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. I have to sell one of your daughters. That way you can go right. to the game. <laughs> right. Yeah, that was really important to me that we can make it affordable to everybody. Hmm. Um, and this is why I said we don't want to depend on, on entrance money at our budget because I just want that people come. So um, the, the ticket prices will be, it will be $8 for an adult and $4 for a kid. The season tickets is – so season ticket include five games. And you pay for four games and you get one game for free. Oh, that's a good deal. I mean, so and got I me so yeah. nobody can you can really not complain about this. There were some people who asked me why is this so cheap. Mm. <laughs> well, you got to start somewhere. If you came out the well, gate and said, "Hey, it's you know fifty dollars for an adult yeah, and forty people," would be mean, like, "Are you crazy?" I like, mean, I want mm. I want that you come to every game. I just don't want that you can afford only to go to one game exactly. because it's with a family of like you said, Simon. I don't want that you have to spend one hundred fifty dollars for a game. Right. Mm, I right. want that you really come. That you maybe buy a scarf or a hat or whatever, um, and just have fun and say, you know what, it was worth the money. I come next week again. Yeah. Right. Yep. Exactly. Right. And as you mentioned, uh, opening day just a few short weeks away, April twenty third against Marquette University at Valley Field. 7 p.m., go there, support the Torrent, support Milwaukee soccer as, as a whole. I mean, yes, it's Marquette. It's, it's a game you obviously want to support the Torrent, but it's two Milwaukee teams yes. getting together and playing the beautiful game from an American perspective, as we <laughs> like to say here on Tube Front. Well, Andy Davi, thank you so much for joining us on the program today, sir. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.